So, you know, you make less of them and more of us. That's the best possible scenario, so. Well, and, and killing doesn't change your mind. It squelches their opinion. It doesn't really, like you said, the way you change people's minds rather than kill them or convince them. Killing doesn't change someone's mind. It just gets rid of them. You know what I mean? It makes another one of them, too. It nullifies. Yeah. It's the person nullification. Double. That would be double speed. <laughs> so yeah, complaints about New Hampshire. No, not I mean, well. Yeah, complaints about New Hampshire. And it doesn't have to be about activism. Like, yeah. But once you hear mine, you're just I, gonna be like, that's stupid. I was just gonna <laughs> mention about like the, the restaurant scene in Manchester. You know, from Los Angeles area. So get out of my brain. Like, uh, there's a nine, like, three things. Three things. There's there's a nine percent meal tax, which just shouldn't exist. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, the bar is closed too early. Uh, right, uh, what's the hashtag, yellow swag blaze it? Um, <laughs> and, and nobody will accept my doge coins. Now, I, now that I've said those three things, um, agorism has solved all of those problems. So I, I really don't have anything to complain about. Well, there's nothing really surprising to complain about. I mean, nothing's perfect, and obviously coming in just knowing that thing. The funny thing that happens when you take a bunch of activists, people, and activists aren't just an occupation, they're kind of in the blood. There's people who are just very strongly opinionated, have no fear, and are just used to just shouting their opinions in people's faces, even peacefully, right? But still, just a very cantankerous, excited group that's used to just not letting things slide, just going full force into it. Sometimes that's ended up being like a dog chasing its own tail. And it's ended up sort of turning on a lot of the good activism in the community. Every once in a while, for example, you have people who are trying to work within the system, and then you'll have, you know, again, their friends turning against them and saying, oh, you're voting with violence, man, you just, oh, you just suck, and this and that, or, you know, I don't like your style of stuff, you're welcome in our town, all the social club, whatever, just a little bit of, tone it down, guys, a little bit, just, you know, Go fight, go fight for liberty, don't, don't argue so much. That's the only thing I would say. Uh, mine's the pizza. The pizza sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no good pizza. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I come from Philly, and that pizza is the shit. Excuse my language. But that pizza's amazing, and it's wonderful, and I come here, and... I eat a piece of pizza and I'm like, what is this thing? Uh, so, I mean, that maybe that would be a pretty good agar. I used to make pizza, maybe I'll start a pizza business when I move back here. Make the best pizzas that ever did live. Will you accept Dogecoin? <laughs> I will accept. Yeah, I'll accept Dogecoin. Will you accept? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, when it comes to, act, to the activism, nothing at all disappointed me. I, I really didn't come into this with any expectations. I've lived in a lot of different communities, and, and I know that a lot of people can be different. Uh, so I kind of just came into it thinking, can't wait to find out how this is. So that's about it for me. Uh, now, what is your favorite thing about New Hampshire? Now, let's not even talk about activism. Nothing, not the people, just the state. For all of the people who will see this, explain to people what is the most wonderful thing about living in New Hampshire. The pizza. <laughs> Too shit. Uh, this is taking me a while, and it's probably a little different depending on where you live, but I really do like my local community of mostly status. Um, but the thing is, is you know, th these are these stereotypical uh, New England types, who most of which moved here from someone else, but they've all adopted the same persona, um, but are, are absolutely accepting and willing to welcome you in and willing to hear new ideas. You know, when I, when I hear someone in, in our selectmen's meeting, one of the selectmen say, you know, maybe we don't need to regulate that. I'm like sitting there going, what a win, what a win. That, that's great, so yeah, I, I've really, really fallen in love with the people and that surprised me. I, I thought I would be ostracized, more so. Cool, um, 
I'll go personal. Uh, one thing I really like is going on walks in the woods. It's like a like a spiritual, natural thing that's a lot of fun to do. And I think this great this place is great. Right? There's so many trails. I I've, I've been here since mid July, and I I thought I'd hit almost everything in town, but I was totally wrong. There's way more. This is the first fall that I've ever seen. Ever. Like the trees, what's happening to the trees? They're broken. <laughs> it's insane. It's mind blowing. And the pictures can't even capture it. Well, I would sort of touch on points one and three. Uh, the real thing is we have work to do here. We don't have that much work to do because the locals, the community is just, they're great people and they're just, they're. It's just everything we're trying to accomplish is so much easier than anywhere else just because people seem to be much more receptive to that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, it's almost like coming home to a lot of people. Uh, other than that, I would definitely say if we can leave Actos completely out of it, I would just say the fall, but not just the fall, like the winter, the spring, the summer. I personally have no beef with any of the seasons here. I think it's awesome. I think that, like, I've been through all of them. I've, driven around the state for work all over the place. There's like nothing gross in New Hampshire. It's like, it's all pretty, it's all cool, it's all nice. And like, I mean, I came, I moved out from Satan's butthole, I mean, Arizona. And so there was some parts of it that just, you know, there's like three nice things and the rest is just nasty. And here it's like, everything's nice, this little tent on it. This is quaint and adorable, quaint and adorable, beautiful fall, beautiful snow. Beautiful, I mean, oh, the beach is nice, it's this and that. I mean, there's like maybe a neighborhood in Nashville or something, but other than that, it's pretty much good. Okay, uh, I will say that it is the people, the laid back nature, the acceptance of, of all people. Uh, the restaurant that I uh, started working in, uh, in Tamworth. Uh, you know, it was, I think, my first day back from Poor Fest. Uh, had very, it was on my birthday, actually, I got the job, July 1st. So it was my, um, my first day back from Poor Fest, because I had uh, traveled a little in between Poor Fest and that, in any case. Uh, I went in, got the job immediately, uh, sat down and spoke with the manager for an hour and a half, two hours. She asked me tons of questions. Um, I always brace myself when, when people ask what I do, uh, and I, because I'm not going to not say it. Uh, so I did, and I kind of expected uh, this or that or, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, but, you know, she just said, that's great, that's amazing, keep going. And then uh, when a couple of my roommates, Kate, and I don't, you know, Kate and Adamo visited, uh, but when uh, Pete and uh, Amanda and uh, Brock, I think, came in, and uh, you know they left a, a cop lock uh, warning pamphlet on the table, and uh, you know they, you know, <laughs> which is great. I think it's amazing. Uh, but again, I, I kind of braced myself because they were like, "Your roommates are here, and they were talking about you know stopping the police and doing all this and that." And, and once they read it, they they saved it. I, you know, until I left, that that warning, that that pamphlet's still there. They were all really accepting and really wonderful, and and they were really supportive of my activism. Uh, you know, they called me outlaw, <laughs> and you know, we're really awesome and we're really really cool about it. So, and I noticed that with a lot of people, everyone was really everyone's really laid back. There's no rush. There's no beeping in traffic, there's no this, there's no, you know, there's no just hurry up and wait, the people are just laid back and accept it. I that like I to spring off that restaurant story a little bit. Go. My place of work, you know, obviously I'm that car, that crazy looking car called bumper stickers, right? Because, you know, of course. And so a couple of, uh, a couple of people, that, a couple of my students came in and said, hey, what the, that was a really awesome bumper sticker uh, that says, I do not consent to any service or searches. And I was like, oh, Seth Hipple's law firm there. And it's, they're like, oh, that's awesome, that's awesome. And then next time I came in and I had one here just for you, and then she just about flipped out with joy. It's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. This is great, it's going right on my car. It's just, there's not, I don't feel like such a, such a 
break, you know, with these people. It's like a, you know, coming home. I've crossed off because they've been answered within the answers. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I will say what my, I guess my last one before we kind of give it up to the audience if they'd like to ask any questions would be what have you learned? What is one thing that you have learned since moving here? Any way you can narrow it down. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, what's something? I mean, uh, <laughs> Okay. I learned a couple of new songs on the ukulele first. Okay. Yeah, I've been studying uh, Euclidean geometry, so. It could be, and you know what? It could be that. It doesn't have to be anything ridiculous. However, I mean, what have you learned from Just because, and, and this is thanks to Chris Cantwell, who put it all in, into perspective when I had kind of a, a, a tough situation, is that, you know, I always kind of assumed that because we're all like-minded and we all have the same goal, that we all have to be really good friends and get along and like each other and, you know, never have our own issues. Uh, but in reality, you know, they're just because we like freedom. Just because a bunch of people like freedom doesn't mean that they're all compatible and they all have, you know, the same interests and personalities. So I kind of learned to accept that because, you know, after, you know, <laughs> being in a situation where I was not compatible with uh, another activist, anarchist, whatever you, you want to call it. But, uh, it was that was a very cathartic moment because it, it made me realize that freedom means you know it also means letting people to be free to be who they are and being confident in who you are and and how you feel and, and in your own activism and your own all that. Anyway. Well, thank you for that example. That helps. Uh, uh, I think I've learned that the plurality of approaches is accepted. And one of our concerns, one of my concerns when I moved to Keene was, okay, well, now if I'm gonna be an activist, I have to be an activist the Keene way. Otherwise, you know, nobody else is gonna be supporting of me. And I'll be out there, you know, I'll be out there on my own. And, you know, I'm, I'm we're on our way up and I'm explaining to Colleen what to expect when she goes into a holding cell, you know. <laughs> this, is, this is what's going to happen when you get arrested um, for filming the cops, so, so just be ready for that. And when the rubber glove, I won't even go there. Um, thank you for not going there. Yeah, yeah. But, like I said, you know, just as much as I'm very supportive of the Keen folks, they make the, the New York Times Alstead Budget Committee has not yet made the New York Times. Um, but they are supportive of, of my efforts, which are things like, you know, running for sheriff or, or doing stuff in my own little town and, and other people. There's a whole community of people around the state that are doing things in different ways. There is no one set way. There is no one thing that's going to get you, you know, if you're doing it the way that you feel and the end result is liberty then nobody's going to give you any slack for it, and you're going to find a lot of people that will support you. And that's, that's what I've learned. It's, there's a place here for you. If your goal is liberty, and you're willing to do the work in whatever way you think is right, if, it, if the goal gets us there sooner, you're going to have a lot of support. So I learned that um, a lot of the locals in New Hampshire actually do love liberty even if they never even had the ideas of liberty explained to them. I don't fully understand it. I think it's just a cultural thing. It's an awesome thing. It's nice to know. I learned this at uh, Pork Fest at the end of June, uh, just talking to a lot of people. I said, oh, are you, you know, FSP or Free State Project? And they're like, nope, we're just natives. What are you hanging out with all of us? Well, you guys are fun to hang out with. We agree on stuff. I was like, that's awesome. And that's the, the plurality thing you're talking about. Not everybody has to call themselves an activist or FSP. They, they love liberty and they live liberty. That's what's going to happen. It's going to work. 
what I've learned. Um, it's it's something that I, I probably should have already known from like the Austrian School of Economics, which is specialization of, of labor, what you're doing. Uh, when I first got here, I dabbled in pretty much everything, and that led to a bit of burnout, and I, I got tired. I got tired of doing, saying yes to every activism opportunity that was presented to me, because you can't do it all. Um, so it's, it's cool to dabble in the very beginning, but I'm, I'm learning uh, now that just, just to do what I'm best at out of those things, narrow it down, and, and hone in on my actual skills. Yeah, my point is sort of the spring more off that is it takes all kinds, right? There's so many different people, so many different backgrounds, and we're all such on the same level in a lot of ways. And like you find people with you know high school dropouts and then people with doctorate programs, and there's no like down up looking at each other, it's all eye to eye. This is the weirdest place in the world because there's people, there's people in their late teens and people old enough to be their grandparents, and they're buddies. They're not like, oh, Sonny, come here. It's like, no, it's just like, you're equals. They're just buddies hanging out, you know, sharing a drink or other things. And it's just like, it, it's, so, it's so weird. But one thing we forget is there's a treasure trove. There's a gold mine of talent and achievement that people are just really quiet about. There's just a lot of people who've done incredible things, that crazy lives, have so much to offer, so much talent and potential. And you just got to go out and find these people and work with them in your, again, your uh, division of labor specialty, right? You find funny people, right? Musicians, like, how many musicians I've run into? They're just like, oh, you know, yeah, I do this, I have my own this, I'm so good at that, and I just never do it. It's like, why don't we all collaborate? And these collaborative institutions and groups aren't there. But the people, you know, the, the tools for that are, are there, you know? If you're funny, you like to be on camera, talk to this guy, you know, if you're into political type stuff, talk to Keith. Uh, if you're into, you know, I mean, if you're into the whole cop locking thing, and anyone on the last panel, I mean, just get plugged in because there's a lot of people with a lot of crazy talents out there. Okay, before we go to the very last question, uh, I just wanted to see if anyone had any questions for anyone on the panel. Hi. Oh, yeah, so there's the line over here oh, for I, questions I wasn't the microphone. Back. So, uh, <laughs> before I get to my actual question, uh, Stephen, did you ever say that victimless thing that wound up getting you a matching pair of bracelets? Yeah, they match perfectly. Thank you for bringing that part up. Um, <laughs> very shiny. So I was in um, a town of Farallon in Ohio, and apparently, if you uh, go to pump gas and your kids are sleeping in the car <laughs> and you go inside to pay for said gas, you have done what's called leaving children unattended in a motor vehicle. Um, what? Yeah, that's what they call that. So don't do that if you're in that town. Every other town around there has never heard of that. They don't even have a court system to enforce it, so they take you to the, a different town where I live that doesn't have that law. So that was not fun at all. Um, they didn't think, I mean, they, they're like, you're a danger. And I'm like, I leave my kids alone eight hours every day. It's called sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It, 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 five minutes of me not being in the car with you. Yeah, you're okay. You're a terrible parent. <laughs> Awful, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, one, no one tells stuff I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so the actual question uh, for all five of you. I, I've actually been to move-in parties for two of the five, so if the other three of you ever had a move-in party, could you explain for people that haven't moved yet the joyousness of a move-in party? And Chris, I know that you can explain how quickly porcupines can unload a, what was that, like a 200-foot trailer and a 90-foot U-Haul uh, truck? It was a super tank. Uh, we actually had to get a whole tugboats to pull it up. It was that big. No, it, it was very quick. And, and again, what amazes me is, you know, you just put out on, you know, the Free State uh, Movers Facebook page, you know, you put a pretty picture of your house or something like that, say, move-in party. If you mention the words pizza and beer, this helps. Um, 
your your only goal is to keep them hydrated and to stay out of their frickin' way because they will <laughs> mow you over. It's good to have somebody directing things off the truck. Good to have somebody in the house to make sure things go where they need. But other than that, you just want to get out of their way because it, it's it's a force of nature. That's that's all I can say. It was that fast. I, I concur. Um, and when I moved here, like I said, I boxed my things up in U-Haul pods and shipped them. Um, my things were here before I was. It's kind of perspective there. But um, <laughs> there were three five foot by uh, eight foot by seven foot pods that I filled up. And I was like, cool, these guys are gonna help me unload. All right, cool. So it was like you know, a few days after I got here that, they, that I posted it. Um, so, so we get the pods and one of them's on backwards. Uh, so you can't get the door open more than like two foot. And Daryl almost got stuck in the pod. <laughs> but that all aside, I, I went to get the pizza like on the hour when the people were gonna, said they were gonna be there. And I get back 20 minutes later, and all the pods are already unloaded. So I, I didn't even lift anything. <laughs> uh, I was kind of spoiled, and Colleen was like, make sure they set up your bed and your washer and dryer. And I did all of it. I mean, seriously, it was fast before the pizza was there. So. I didn't even get a moving party, man. Um, yeah, I, 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 I did a little bit of damn stuff. Yeah, it was like a one-person party, I guess. Um, party of one. But. Um, I don't know, maybe you'll have to put my stuff in a truck and we'll do a lap around the house. And just <laughs> have yeah, yeah, pizza in there, I'll be there at least for you. Again next week. I think I pretty much covered. I just about uh, unloaded my own. I had a two door Civic with all my earthly belongings and didn't have anything. So I just took them up a couple flights of stairs and just, there we go. Uh, pretty much what Joel said. Uh, one of my moves, uh, Campbell did help me load a bunch of stuff into his car from Tamworth to Keene. Uh, but I, I have, I mean, all of my big furniture is uh, in storage. Uh, and so it's basically clothing. I just had a bunch of clothes packed in those vacuum sealed bags, uh, a record player, a guitar, and just packed it all in and, and went. And that was it. So uh, a moving party, if I had one, would consist of three minutes of people pu putting <laughs> moving items and then the rest would basically be pizza and drinking and fun. So. Just so you guys know, if I ever move, you better show up. Hey guys, now, freekeen.com's motto is peaceful evolution. Now, for me, when I moved here, I never really, I kind of thought of it as like building a you know, free society. Uh, but since moving here, it's more about philosophical, uh, spiritual evolution for myself, where I don't even recognize myself from here three months ago, well alone when I first moved. Uh, my question for you guys, living in this community this, uh, of all libertarians and anarchists and whatnot, uh, how has you as a human being changed from when you moved? I, I think anybody involved in the liberty movement, I know people hate that. If liberty is on your mind a lot and you think about liberty, maybe that's a better way to put it. Uh, I think we're always evolving and, and you know, a lot of things that you know, I, I'm new to this thing, you know, I, I, I woke up late in life, you know, 2012 with Ron Paul, because I couldn't stand anybody else. Um, so my thoughts about anarchism and agorism and things like that, um, and, and some of the more left-leaning aspects of libertarianism, I think I've grown more accepting of. Um, that's, that's about all I can say on it. Steve, you better answer can you repeat the question again? <laughs> I was in it. I was listening to him. That's right. okay. Repeat the question again. How have you changed philosophically? Okay. So yeah, um, I was thinking that when I would get here, it would be like the the uh, cattle mover at the head of a train. You know, it's like you got this V and everyone's flying at you, but it's not like that. Um, 
just meeting other people, even that aren't even. I don't like liberty movement because it makes me think of a toilet flushing. So I don't like that. I don't like that phrasing. But people moving for liberty. I mean, there's there's other people here that are just as cool that you can talk you can talk to. Hey, uh, with big things like you know uh, Scotland secession. What do you guys think of secession? What's Scotland doing? And people are like, oh, that's an awesome idea. What do you think about you know maybe this state doing it? Well, maybe maybe we should. I don't know. So it's not even like a no. It'll be blood. It's like well maybe we'll you know we'll see what happens. So that's a nice thing. And I think that's shifting my expectations. You know, philosophically of people. Before I left California, I, I started a Liberty on the Rocks chapter mainly to commiserate with uh, Liberty lovers there. They're the few in California, and oh man, between Thursdays. It was terrible. Like, I was so stressed out, I had no one to talk to, uh, I was just on the edge of my seat waiting for that next liberty jolt, and uh, I've calmed down so much since I moved here. It's every day. It's, yeah, I can just be cool. Well, I've kind of been in this generic lifestyle for all my entire adult life, so nothing really dramatic changed. The only thing that when I moved here, the only chain thing that really changed that's made me a lot more entrepreneurial. Before I was like, I want to fight for liberty. Who can hire me? What job can I do? What can I join? And here, it, I already joined the cause, and now it's like, now go forth and do liberty. And I'm like, what how? And it's got it's got me a lot more into the mindset of I got to figure out how to make it. How I got to build up the institutions. I got to actually go create something, make something beautiful, not just rah-rah behind something that's already there. And I'd like to amend my answer, Rob, just a little bit, because uh, because I am new to this whole line of thinking, it's just been over the last couple of years, I honestly thought that the only thing I would encounter would be sort of Rothbardian anarcho-capitalism, and that was what it was, and that's what everybody up here was. Believe me, I've come a long way. You get exposed to a lot of different things. Okay, well, uh, I guess th my answer is a lot like uh, what I said earlier, uh, what have I learned? Uh, and that's, you know, I've grown as a human being, philosophically, uh, in the way that I have learned to accept that, number one, I'm wrong and I'm not perfect. <laughs> uh, number two, I, don't have to be friends with everyone or be liked with everyone within this, you know, this community uh, of activists who are working for freedom. Uh, and and it's, you know, there are people that I don't like and there are people that don't like me. And like my father said a long time ago, uh, someone else's opinion of you is none of your business. <laughs> Which is, you know, that kind of just hits home and it's what I thought of. So basically, if we can all just work together and get past our differences, even though uh, some of us may have, uh, some of us may really butt heads sometimes, uh, but we're, we can still be able to respect each other, work together, uh, just to, to kind of make this, this world unlike it's ever been, a lot better. Uh, you know, this is a, a new age, it's, I'm rambling on now, but in any case, that's how I've changed, Rob. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to have a small person moment. All right, there we go. All right, so, tough question. The Free State Project slogan is liberty in our lifetime. Now, you've moved here, you've made the move, you've made that big decision. But what's next is you need to decide what aspect of liberty you want to see in your lifetime and what the most important cause is to you. And so what I want to ask is not only what is the most important cause to you, but what you're going to do to try and achieve that with your time here in New Hampshire. Uh, for me, I mean, my main primary focus is to work within my immediate area. I want to impact the things that affect me and my family most directly. And that's how big is 
our tax base? Uh, how, how aggressive is our police force? Do I have the adequate services that I'm willing to pay for? Um, can I make sure that I, we maintain an extremely weak uh, building inspector program? Or can I, can I weaken it even further? So, so that's where I'm going. You know, I, I'm very involved, like I said, in very local politics, right around my town, the things that most affect me directly. One thing, if, if you haven't moved to New Hampshire and you're not familiar with how things really work, a lot gets done in your town. Uh, things that you might, in other states, go to a state office for or a county office. No, you just go see your town clerk for almost everything. It's very different. So, so my focus is really in, in my immediate area. And if I get to a point where I feel like I can do a little more at a county level or something like that, we'll do that. But I'll, I'll be one of those guys that will try to work from within the system to weaken it. Uh, professionally, I'm an IT consultant, so that kind of shapes, that's my area of specialization, division of labor, as you were talking about. Uh, so I try to do things along those lines that I can, that I would foresee helping the cause of liberty. Uh, whether it's working with projects that, you know, are creating privacy solutions, or uh, a myriad of different tools. I mean, that's where I'm specialized, and that's where I try to focus my time. I want to trigger the freaking move. Yeah! Um, earlier I alluded to a show that I, that's coming out on Monday, which is November 3rd. Um, I'm, I'm working on this with Cecilia. Uh, we're releasing it through the Free State Project YouTube and Voices of Liberty, which is Ron Paul's new channel. Uh, the show is called It's Like This Too. And uh, in each episode we're asking people pretty much the same question, what are they doing to exert their fullest practical effort? once they get here, and that's a little excerpt taken from the Statement of Intent for the Free State Project. Um, and hopefully this specific video project will get more signers and will get more early movers. Well, definitely the Trigger the Move is close to a lot of our hearts, and I do a whole lot of work within the Free State Project proper, going to all these conferences, getting signers, doing all that legwork. Uh, Obviously, that's the first, I mean, a million things I'm trying to accomplish, but that's the first, the first pivotal thing is just to trigger the move, to get this to happen, to say the Free State Project is a success, we're all here, now watch us. Step two, I definitely want to create an extra legal economic system, right? I want us all to be able to live out without having to without having to slave away paying for all the wars and the other awful things that we don't like to pay for. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I'll talk about badass activism, we're so badass that we stand up to the cops, we preach the word and all this, but at the same time, then you go to your nine to five, you're working for someone else, and then you're giving so much of the money away to the state, and that's just, that's not cool. I mean, I would love to have New Hampshire completely drop off the tax map. Just do not get anything from this. Okay, first of all, that was a really tough question, but an awesome one. I don't know where she went. Right here. There you are. Hi. Hi. I'm, I'm short. short. <laughs> I'm short. It's okay. Uh, uh, and to answer what I, I think you asked, what we'd like, or you know, what we'd like to see happen. Uh, what I personally would like to see happen is to see as many status converted as possible. Uh, I don't, I can't put a number on it. Uh, just pretty much every every status that I come across. <laughs> uh, but uh, and then what I'm doing to make that happen, or to try to make that happen, is is to convert people. And there are different ways that I do that, and I adjust my approach based on, you know, how, how close they are to me. You know, with my family, yeah, statist, minarchist, whatever you want to call them. So, you know, they were minarchist, some were statist. I just lead by example, I don't push. I just kind of, if it comes up, I say what I believe in, and, you know, they can share the videos, they can hate me, they can do what they want, you know, with, with my opinion, but, uh, you know, it, it's working. 
uh, with, and especially with people I work with. I work with 50 people who can't even comprehend that that the that anarchy is a good thing, or they couldn't before. Uh, and you know, they would ask why I would promote anarchy and and why. You know why I do what I do, and, and this and that. And once I just I explain it, I don't you know jump on them and scream at them. I have an open dialogue. Uh, and you know a lot of them. There's one girl in particular who is now calls herself a voluntarist after fighting with me six months ago uh, about the military. Uh, actually, it wasn't six months ago. I think it was Thanksgiving, so it was almost a year ago. Uh, and it was a, about about the military and supporting the military. And she didn't talk to me for months. Uh, and I didn't scream at her or anything like that. I just kind of said, okay, well, this is why I believe what I believe. And you can think what you want. And, and now she is constantly asking questions as to, you know, how the free market would work and why it's better than the state and, and you know, all of that. So uh, that's how I do it in my personal life. Now, when it comes to uh, people that... I don't know, and, you know, on a grand scale, people, strangers, the, you know, statists in society that I, I may never meet. Uh, it's, I like to market freedom, first of all, and I like to, to make people understand it and make it look pretty, <laughs> make it look nice. Uh, make it look normal or trendy or, or whatever it is and, you know, kind of let people know that just because we want to be free, doesn't mean we're crazy and we want to violently, you know, destroy things and, and, and have chaos and, and violence and murder. Uh, and I also, and if I do, you know, YouTube videos to, you know, and in that case, I, I push the envelope because I can't sit down, like I, I said to Ian before when I was on Free Talk Live, I don't have the opportunity to sit down and speak with these people and read them. So I just kind of put it all out there, no holds barred, just kind of go for it and, uh, you know, not watered down freedom message. So that's all I do. Uh, so I noticed that our keynote speaker, Carla Garrick, the president of the Free State Project, is here. Hey, Carla. Are you all right holding off until we finish off all these questions for these folks? Just for a little bit? All right, cool. So if you've got a question for the panel, I'm oh, sorry? Cool. If you've got a question for the panel, please line up now and we'll get you in. If you're not on the line, then you're not going to get in. All right, so um, here's my question for you guys. There's key invention focuses on activism. We've got panels all weekend about the different kinds of activism that you'll find. You know, just today we talked about cop block. Uh, we've had a legislative panel early this morning. Ladies uh, and their various different activist uh, efforts and throughout the weekend we'll be hearing from more, you know, uh, civil disobedience or direct action and a lot of different types. We've got all kinds of outreach going on. I mean, there's a lot happening in New Hampshire. As you pointed out, Shire Dude, I mean, you got burned out because there was so much that you could plug into and it was a little overwhelming. Uh, looking at all the activism that we have had and we continue to have, what's missing? I mean, from your, from your perspective as somebody who's brand new, fresh, you know, fresh pair of eyes coming into all of this, what did you expect to see that you didn't see? What would you like to see that hasn't been created? I realize you guys kind of gave long-term answers for what you want to see in the future, but like, what's, in, what's missing immediately that we could do now? Like, we've got plenty of people here. What, what should we be doing? And you don't have to have an answer for this. You know, if, if you've got one, please pipe up. I would love to hear it. Thanks. Prostitutes. <laughs> Hush, you're not a new mover. I want it. <laughs> Well, I was just going to say I don't really have a real good answer for that. Um, this always opens a can of worms because it has to do with voting. And half the people in this room are going to say never vote, and the other half will be vote for my vote. But uh, I, I really like to see a more concerted effort to uh, change election laws to allow other candidates that don't have a D or an R uh, to be able to get on the, on the ballot. I talked about this a little earlier. Uh, I'd like to see um, an open and communicable dialogue with oppositional forces who, with the ideas of freedom, people in town, people across the rest of New Hampshire. Um, whether it's uh, 
public public debates uh, where chair you know uh, proceeds go to charities. You know we can raise a fund, raise five thousand dollars, and give it to a charity if somebody else pay us. Um, whether it's you know uh, agorist agorist businesses or agorist uh, providers offering discounts for people that don't like the ideas of liberty, if you'll have a five minute talk with them and video tape it. I mean, there's tons of areas. I want I want that debate because I don't, I personally dislike the characterization uh, that people that love liberty are antagonist. Uh, you might say it's antagonist the status quo, but that's not really the goal. The goal is freedom, not antagonism. So that area, but that local area, I'd like to see that be resolved. I'd like to see an increase in the volume of Manchester activism and just culture in general. We should be going full keen in Manchester, like all the time. Where's Manchester? Right? It's kind of broad spectrum, but it just needs to be louder. But I moved to Manchester not knowing any of the activism that goes on in Manchester. And yeah, it's gotta be louder. Is that the parallel to full Monty? Full keen? Full keen. Okay. Oh. No, it's from yeah. 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 I kind of, again, because we think alike a little bit, I sort of have the same deal. One word, structure. There's tons of stuff happening. And someone's doing election stuff, someone's doing civil disobedience, someone's doing cop blocking, someone's doing agorism, someone's doing Bitcoin evangelism. There's always there's tons of that, but there's no structure or organization behind that. And uh, key tends to be the you know, uh, grouchy to say it, but he tends to be dead to have it together more than anywhere else in terms of that. In terms of, you know, what's happening, you know, what's happening, when's it happening, who's in charge of making it happen, that kind of thing, who's in charge of organizing it. Like, we can have all the electoral people out there, all the volunteers, but there's no, like, internship program for bringing young people in to do that kind of thing. We can have all there's no Manchester cop block as far as I'm aware. There's no like official chapter, no official people. No one's saying this is, you know, there's, I mean, Riaz does a lot of the stuff, but it's not like, there's no structure, there's no group, no anything. It's just people might hear about it, it might happen, it might not. If someone doesn't do something, jury nullification, the same thing. Uh, then you've got like the Bitcoin evangelism community. There's plenty of people that are doing it independently, but there's no concerted effort of, okay, we need to convince.